How does the Brian Goulet stay organized? Between the store, the videos, email, and social media, I'd imagine it's a tall order. Not to mention like my kids and family and you know all of our team and everything. Um, what organizers and or notebook styles do you use, bullet journals, etc.? Thanks in advance. All right, so this is a really interesting question because I, uh, when I actually stop and think about it, I do kind of have a lot going on. Uh, I often don't stop and think about it because then I'm not getting anything done. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, I thought it would be nice for you to just kind of hear what my process is uh, personally. It's an evolving process. I'm by no means like a productivity guru of any kind. Um, I'll just share with you what my experience is after about uh, probably three years of very intentional uh, productivity honing and toning. And I've recently had kind of a breakthrough with some of my stuff. I've, I've uh, kind of reignited my own productivity stuff due to how just stinking busy I've been. Um, so anyway, uh, I, have, I have a blend. I'll start out by saying like I don't have everything, everything organized into notebooks. I have actually have a pretty extensive list of various uh, programs and notebooks and stuff like that that I use. So it's a somewhat complicated system, very highly personalized for myself, but I'll try and explain my logic. Um, so in general, when it comes to writing with pens and stuff like that, I tend not to like inject that into my process any more than I need to. I look at them in terms of like keeping myself organized, pens are a tool. They're much less of, I want to have a nice writing experience. It's, it's really more of a tool. I like to be as productive as I can when I'm being productive so that I can be free to use my pens at my leisure. That's more my style. I do use them at work regularly, obviously, um, but they are more of a tool. Uh, when I, I like to enjoy them more when I'm just kind of tinkering with them, playing around with them, writing handwritten thank yous and correspondence and stuff like that. That's when I just really enjoy them more. So I have kind of two different sides to the way I use my pen. So I'll just kind of say that as clarification in case you think, oh my gosh, he doesn't use his pens nearly as much as I thought he does. I really do, but for this purpose of being organized, I maybe don't as much as you think. So um, the basis for my personal productivity system is based on David Allen's Getting Things Done, which is a very, very popular system. I think he came out with this book in 2001. And uh, it's a method that he has, which I will very briefly try to explain the overview of it. But if you haven't read the book, it's phenomenal. Um, and also another book that he's written as a follow-up is called Making It All Work, um, which also, I love just how like corporate these books look too. I think he's in the process of redesigning them, but not exactly my style there with the coat and tie. But see, you know, he, the new book he came out with, he dropped the tie. So maybe he's uh, loosening up a little bit. Anyway, he's got a very corporate background, a lot of like CEO consulting and stuff like that. Um, but he's, his, his system is phenomenal. Um, and I'm going to try to explain it to you uh, very briefly. I tried to write it down so that I would um, be able to do it concisely. So the basic ideology of getting things done. Um, you get things out of your head and in a trusted system that you review regularly. Because basically, when you have something in your brain, your brain thinks you should be doing it all the time. So when you get a lot of stuff in your head, it thinks you should be doing all of it all the time. And it subconsciously just pops up randomly a, a bunch of times out of context. You know, and he, the example he gives in the book is when, uh, when is the time that you think about needing uh, flashlight batteries, you know, for that dead flashlight you have. You think about it when your power goes out, not when you're walking by fresh batteries at the store. So he says your brain is not a very intelligent system in terms of reminding you of things. So you build a trusted system so that when you intentionally think about it, you put it in your system. That way you don't have to be constantly reminded of it. And when you do that, your brain doesn't pop in all these random things at times. Um, so basically his process is you put everything into an inbox, whatever that looks like, whether it's digital, physical, whatever. You put it into an inbox, everything, everything goes into that inbox, and then you process that inbox regularly. And you make decisions about what it is and what is the next action step. So you're clarifying exactly what that thing is so that it's not just a to-do list that has bank and, you know, call mom. You know, you, you're spending a, a few extra seconds to think about what is that next action step. And then that alleviates some of your stress. Um, so you're clarifying what's the next action step. And then you review it at least weekly. You know, I end up reviewing some of my stuff daily, but uh, at least weekly I'm reviewing everything. That way I know it's really important to know what it is that I'm okay not doing that week, right? Um, you know, for example, clean the garage. My garage is a bit messy right now. I have things I need to take care of. 
So every day when I pull in the car with the kids and all that kind of stuff, I'm going like, oh my gosh, this garage is a mess, you know, because I'm being reminded of it constantly. Or I might be sitting here at work and as I have five seconds, I'm like, oh, the garage is a mess. And it just, ugh, it just pops into my head randomly. I can't control it. Um, but uh, anyway, so that's what's going on there. So you, you put it in that system, you review it regularly. That way mentally, you know, okay, I'm deciding this week, I'm not worrying about the garage. And then guess what? You're not gonna worry about the garage that much because you've already made that decision. And then the last thing is you just do it. So when you have everything into your system, whatever it may be, um, you are deciding in your weekly review, the things that you really need to focus on and things that aren't as important, you kind of shove to the side. Um, and then you can just kind of cross things off your list and you get to boom, 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 just check them all off. So I use a lot of different programs and I will explain a lot of them. Forgive me if I look at my notes a lot because I'm gonna try to plow through. Clearly I'm talking very long and I'm gonna try and go. So um, OmniFocus 2 is my app of choice. It's on my Mac and I have it synced up on my phone as well. It is definitely like one of the best uh, you know, tools to accompany the getting things done method. Um, and I've been using it for about three years now. Well, OmniFocus 1 and then OmniFocus 2 when it came out. Um, but it is, it is the best thing that I've found to help uh, me to capture all of the various things that I have going on. So basically it kind of builds upon this process. You have an inbox, you clarify things with, you know, what it is. And then, and then the other important thing that really has been kind of my recent breakthrough is, um, is contexts. So before I was like out of control with my context and I wasn't really using them, but basically you can assign kind of like a meta tag. You can assign a tag to whatever your action item is based on what is when is the appropriate time to do it. So things that I can only do at home, I tag with home. I can't clean my garage when I'm at work. So when I'm at work and I'm looking at all of the, I have an hour. Okay. Let's give an example. I have an hour. Okay. What are all the things I could do in the next hour? Okay. I look at my, look at my notes. Clean garage shouldn't be on my list because I can't do that. I don't want to be bothered with that because I can't do that when I'm at work. So you can filter and stuff based on those contexts. So I have different contexts based on my constraints, right? So if I have uh, some time and I, I need to make phone calls and I only want to do that when I have time or the ability to make a phone call, I have phone calls as a context. So I know that unless I am at a place where I'm ready to make a phone call, I don't need to be reminded of that action. Likewise, if I'm not at home, I don't need to be reminded of the things where I'm at home. You know, if it's something with my kids, I need to be with my kids to do it. I only need to be reminded of that thing when I'm actually with my kids. You get what I'm going for here. Uh, so it takes a little bit of time to kind of like clarify and make all these decisions, especially initially. Uh, but I've been doing it for three years now and I've, I've really recently, I kind of like ooh, I dove in deep. I reread Getting Things Done, Making It All Work and his other book, Ready for Anything. I read a lot. Um, I reread it several times and I'm, I'm like literally going through and marking it up and highlighting and making all kinds of notes and stuff like that um, because I want to really get it together um, there. So me personally, huh, this may overwhelm you, but I have uh, over 1,100 different actions uh, listed in my OmniFocus program. So it could range anything from, you know, uh, build a workshop. I'm a woodworker. I don't have a workshop. I would like to build one. It's not going to be for a while, but I have it as an action, you know, so it's, it's on my, my radar and, you know, I review it every week and I'm like, build a workshop. Yep. I don't need to worry about it right now, but it's on my radar. So I have all these things, you know, when I need to get my driveway sealed two years from now, it's on my list and it's going to remind me a year and a half from now when I need to call the person that seals the driveway, you know, so I have all of these things, 1100 of these things in there. And it's, it seems like a lot, but all of these things would be in my head otherwise and being reminded. I think he says in the book that, that we, we each have 50,000 thoughts a day. And if you have a lot of stuff stored in your head, your 50,000 thoughts, a lot of them could be things that you don't need to be thinking about. If you have the same, he says, if you have the same, the same thought twice, you're causing yourself stress. So anyway, so OmniFocus 2 is really super helpful for me. I've recently been getting into Evernote. I, I know Evernote is a really powerful program. A lot of people have been using it and some people kind of use it solely. I like OmniFocus best for managing my projects and actions and stuff. Evernote is something I'm trying now a little bit more because it syncs up and I'm even reading on some stuff that like people are using OmniFocus and Evernote together for the getting things done method. So I'm, I think I'm maybe onto something there. I'm exploring it a little bit more, um, but Evernote is nice for like quick note taking and especially audio picture, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, being able to capture it quickly is important for me and then being able to review it regularly. So the fact that it can like sync up with my devices and stuff is, is helpful. 
Um, I have an app called Simple Mind that I use for mind mapping. It's another thing he talks about in the book and it's something I've been doing more intentionally when you're just kind of brainstorming. For example, if you need to move, there's a lot of things related to moving. So you might just have like move my, move my apartment or whatever. And so you might think of oh, a moving truck, boom. So you just do an offshoot and write moving truck. And you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna need boxes too. Boom, offshoot of moving truck and you go boxes. You know, so it's like whatever kind of pops into your head, it kind of spurs like these, this web of things that pop up. So it helps in the brainstorming process to, to provide a little bit of structure around that. Um, so I have a lot of various things that I'm kind of mind mapping. Um, and then I'll use those and kind of revisit those when it comes time to a brainstorming thing. So I'll ha I like having that on my phone because um, you know sometimes I'll do it in, in person with paper, um, which is helpful doing the mind mapping, especially because I love writing with pens. Um, but I'm not often in a place where I'm able to do that, especially if I'm like around my kids and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, Ellie's birthday party is coming up. There's so many details. You know, when it pops into my head, if you know, I'm, I'm not like ignoring my kids or whatever. I don't want you to be thinking about that. But if something pops into my head and I'm going to be distracted and thinking about it anyway, it's actually better for me to just pull it up and to just like write down a couple of things real quick. And then, whew, okay, it's off my brain. I can go back to like paying attention to my kids. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, here at work, we use Basecamp. Um, you know, it's a good program. It definitely doesn't like fill in all the cracks, but it's helpful for some of the collaborative to-do lists and projects and stuff that we have going on. We use it as a shared calendar for some of the media projects that we work on. Um, we use Outlook Exchange uh, at work here. So we use that for kind of a shared calendar um, and also for our email server as well. Um, so that is very helpful. Um, we use Slack for inter-office communication. That's a very kind of hip new thing that's even crossing over into some of the social media stuff. People setting up different Slack teams and stuff. I know Pen Addict has a good Slack uh, thing. So that is uh, something that's more up and coming. Um, various apps for all of our social media channels. I have YouTube app and Instagram and all, you know, all these various things. You name it, Twitter, you know, of course. Um, all these various things. So I'm on all those, dipping in and out of those programs all day long. Um, Google, Google, Google Docs, Google Sheets. I don't use Google, Google Calendar, but we use the Docs and the Sheets for collaborative work. Um, I use a program called Mars Edit on my computer. Um, it's kind of an app for helping a draft blog post like q and I'm reading out of it literally right now with Q&A and uh, doing various video prep and stuff like that. So it's just a, it's just a, a drafting uh, app that I use um, that can sync up with the blog. I use a Reminders app on my phone for things like grocery lists and things at certain stores and whatnot. Um, so that's helpful. I use 1Password on my computer, my Mac, for um, security purposes. I also have it synced up to my phone, so you can do um, you know, very long kind of cryptic uh, passwords unique to every single site that you visit. It's really a good measure of security to use. Um, I highly recommend you look into something. If it's not 1Password, make it something else. Apple has their own now that is incorporated in some of the phones, but uh, I've been using 1Password, so we've got that um, set up for everybody here at work. So we all have unique passwords to everything, just to increase security. That's really good. Um, Text Expander, this is a really cool program. Um, if you've never heard of it, um, I don't know if they, for, P for PC, everything I do is Mac-based, by the way, if you hadn't noticed. Um, but it's really cool. It's a, it's, um, it's kind of like a uh, shortcut program. So it it's, has what they call snippets. So you can type out whatever, you know, if it's a single sentence that's, uh, that you would, something that you would type a lot. Um, or if it's like for me, if it's the name of a brand that I tend to misspell a lot, Lloyd Sherm 1917 or whatever, um, I can do shortcuts. So you can basically assign a shortcut to it. So instead of saying Louis Sturm 1917, having to type it out, or New Louis Black Swan and Australian Roses, if I type that a lot, I can assign like N1 or something like that. And then when I type N1, that combination together, boom, it'll automatically put New Louis Black Swan and Australian Roses instead. So it saves time when typing a lot of the same things over and over again. If you're doing certain types of data entry or writing code or something like that, um, it could be really, really helpful for you. So um, Text Expander is a sweet program. I also have one called Jump Cut. Jump Cut is a really cool program that um, allows you to store a lot more um, you know, copy-paste items in your clipboard, uh, 40 of them actually. So it's really helpful for me, um, especially when hyperlinking things on the blog or with certain emails and stuff like that. Um, it allows you to store multiple things in a clipboard and then you can just kind of pull up your Jump Cut program and you can go back to, what did, I, was I, what did I copy into my clipboard eight things ago? And you can kind of scroll through and be like, oh yeah, that's the link that I wanted. So you don't have to go back to the site and find the link again. It's really cool. So so check that out. It was really cheap too. I think it was like $2 maybe. Uh, I've also used Dragon Dictate. Um, that is a program that allows you to do speech to text. 
Um, that I haven't been using quite as much. It takes a lot of kind of training and it's, it's a little quirky and it's, it doesn't quite function like my brain naturally does. So I'm, I'm still not using it all that much. Um, where I do tend to use it is when I'm transcribing stuff from my book. Um, so I'll have things in my books and I'll have like a whole paragraph or a quote or something like that. You know, if I have a whole paragraph like that that I want to type up into notes and share with my leadership team, um, it'll be really helpful. I can just pull up that program and as I'm drafting my notes, I can literally just read what's in the book and boom, it'll put it in there. I know there's other ways to do it. I can take a picture of it and have it, you know, convert it to text and all that stuff. I just find that the speaking it is a lot easier because I can also kind of say my notes at the same time in my brain. Okay. I also use a personal budgeting app called You Need a Budget, uh, YNAB. Um, that's really helpful. It's, it's a zero-based budgeting program. I've done Dave, Durant's, Dave Ramsey Financial Piece, hosted it several times. Um, very kind of cool program that helps a lot to just manage personal finances. Um, so uh, I use that regularly. I do you know budgeting stuff at least every month if I'm not checking it out even more often. So that's very helpful. Um, and then when it comes to other stuff like photos and video and all that, um, personally, I've been using Aperture for my photos, but that has been abandoned since last year. I'm literally now in the process of needing to switch over to Lightroom. I just need to do it. Um, I backed everything up finally last night and uh, I'm in the process of transitioning over. I know there's different routes you can go with all that stuff, but I'm, I'm more familiar with Lightroom. We use Lightroom here at work, so that's the route I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up going there. So I have, I don't know, uh, 200 gigabytes of photos of my kids so far. So yeah, there's that. And then um, for video, I use Final Cut Pro X. Um, which, you know, is definitely in question is like, how long is that going to last if they've been an aperture? You know, Apple's definitely going the way of getting away from kind of like more professional grade stuff. But then again, I don't need professional grade stuff for my home video stuff anyway. So I'm, I'm using that right now and I'll continue using that. I, video is a whole other beast. But anyway, so that's kind of on the high tech side of things. Whew, yeah, and that's not even everything. That's just the stuff that I thought was kind of worth mentioning. I have all kinds of other little various apps here and there that I use. Um, but uh, that is part of what helps me to keep my junk in order. And then on the low tech side, I have several different journals and stuff like that that I use uh, regularly. So um, honestly, I use more journals than I should. I probably only need one or two different types. I just end up using a lot of different types because it's my job, you know, and it helps me to know all these different types of paper and, and get to try out different pens with different formats and stuff like that. So um, that's why I end up using so many of them. So that I'll say right off the bat. So I have a Midori Traveler's Notebook that I use and have used for a bunch. I love, this is very portable. So I like carrying it around, traveling with it. Huh, imagine that. Um, you can put in different uh, notebooks. I have one that's a grid, a lined, and a blank. So if I want to do a mind mapping, I'll do a, just a quick one. I'll do that on the blank one. If I want to take you know, one type of notes, I'll do it on the lined, and a different type of notes, I'll do it on the graph. So that's very helpful. I have a Rodeo number 16 dot pad, which I use a lot of time for just quick notes, little to-do lists here and there. You know, if I need to do uh, whatever, make a list of something, oh my gosh, these are the products I'm gonna need for the next video, and I need somebody to take them out of stock for me, I might write them down if I'm on the fly, and then just hand it to somebody or shoot it to him in an email or whatever, but on the low tech side, and then I do a lot of, you know, ink reviews and just ink testing and stuff. I always, always have a number 16 dot pad on my table. I have various other notebooks that I'll take around to different meetings and stuff. Um, Claire Fontaine, Wirebound, uh, Nemesign notebook is kind of nice because it's a little, little bit structured. So, you know, I can have like a meeting title at the top and then some action points and whatnot. I also use a Rodia dot pad top Wirebound, just similarly to the dot pad. Um, and then I have, late, really recently I've just started playing with the new Rodia Ice meeting book. Um, literally I've gone to like just a couple of meetings just kind of writing down some quick uh, notes here and there and it's, uh, it's kind of nice so it's got a little spot for action points and stuff like that. So this is nice if I want to be a little more present in a meeting, you know, especially for something like a job interview or something like that which we're interviewing for, uh, you know, some of this stuff right now. Um, but if you're in an interview, having a laptop up can be a little bit cold, you know what I mean? So I usually, especially because we're in the pen business, so it's nice um, if I'm in an interview setting or something like that to ha have a little less of a barrier between people. So that's when I'll bust out something like the notebook here. But uh, a lot of other meetings are so tactical that I need to have the computer up, but this can come in handy there. Um, and then another one that I really like, um, this one I've actually filled, is the File Effects notebook. 
And uh, what I like about this one is, uh, first off, you can get different types of paper in it, which is cool. Um, but you can also move the sheets around. So I'll, I can just open it up, sort of like my getting things done method of like having an inbox and then processing it after the fact. I can just open it up right to the front, start burning on some notes, and then later decide like, what is the context of what I just wrote down? Oh, this is like a work-related thing? Okay, so I can pull it out. I know like the blue tab might be my you know meetings. Uh, red tab might be uh, strategic planning. Yellow pad might be personal stuff. So you can just kind of come up with whatever your own system is. You can move around everything as you want and uh, it's very handy that way. So um, you can get that in several different sizes depending on what works best for you. And I'm testing them all out right now. Um, and then um, I have an inbox, a physical inbox right here that I keep on my desk that I can throw a bottle of ink into or a pen that I might need to test or you know, a, a letter that a customer wrote that um, wants me to read it and various notes. If I come back from a meeting and I don't have time to file it away, I've got a file drawer down here um, that has you know, various like labeled uh, file folders and whatnot. So that I've taken some time to organize. Um, so if I have you know, papers that I need to file away, but I don't have time to actually file them, I just take them dump them in my inbox. And then I make some dedicated time to kind of process my, my physical inbox. Um, I also get tons of pens and stuff like that, so it helps to have a common place to be able to put all that stuff. Um, and then I have a whole separate storage system just for my pens, which I showed a little bit in the Q&A 100. Uh, episode, um, but that I have uh, a similar kind of thing, and I actually keep an Excel spreadsheet with all of my pens listed, so I know what I have in there and whatnot, and even what drawer that it's supposed to be in, um, to help to manage all that. Because it's to the point where I had to actually devise a whole system just for my pens, because I have about 400 of them now. So, um, and I need to be able to quickly reference them when I do Q and A's and stuff. So it really helps. I can just pull a pen and go at it. Um, and then lastly, the other thing that kind of is helpful, which David Allen talks about in his book, is uh, having a label maker. So I've got just a Dymo label maker, nothing fancy, but it is battery powered. Um, so I don't have to, or sorry, it is plug in, so I don't have to worry about batteries. Um, so that's helpful when I need to label file folders or various things, pen, cabinet, anything like that. I get a new pen brand. Okay, just print out the label, stick it on the, on the drawer, and then I can uh, just quickly reference that. So um, that's kind of completes the low end side of what I have going on. So whew, I told you that one was going to be a doozy. But anyway, hopefully that's helpful to you. I get a little insight to the mind of Brian Goulet. Obviously been very intentional. It is an evolving process, very much so. But when you want to get something done, you give it to the busiest person, right? That's a good saying. I don't know where it came from, but that's it. All right. <clears throat>